Good evening. On behalf of Mortar Board, Omicron Delta Kappa, and my co-chair, Isabel Cooper, welcome to William & Mary's first ever virtual Yule Log celebration. My name is Abram Clear, and I'm the Vice President of Omicron Delta Kappa. Each year, Mortar Board and ODK sponsor this ceremony as a unique William & Mary tradition. We are so excited that you've joined us tonight for an evening filled with the warmth and cheer of this holiday season. My name is Meg Hogan, and I am President of Mortar Board. As we gather tonight, we would like to take a moment to thank all of you who have donated to our Yule Log donation drive. This year, we are donating the proceeds to WM Fire. WM Fire addresses the inequities and obstacles faced by immigrant, migrant, and undocumented community at large through education, empowerment, and action. Their mission is to gather information and processes provide advocacy, and promote awareness of immigration issues to inspire positive change. Their Dare to Dream Fund helps offset the costs that students at William & Mary with heightened vulnerability due to their immigration classification may face, including aid for approved legal fees and documentation renewals during their time at William & Mary. If you have not yet had a chance to donate, you can do so through William & Mary's Giving website. Our first speaker of the evening is one of our favorite Yule Log celebrities. She's here tonight to read a 2020 version of the classic holiday poem, Twas the Night After Finals. Please give a warm welcome to our very own Vice President for Student Affairs, Ginger Ambler. Twas the night after finals. <clears throat> Twas the month after finals, and all through the college, not a creature was stirring. They were too stuffed with knowledge. Term papers were hung on the dorm walls with care in hopes that good grades would soon appear there. Bills and Marys were nestled all snug in their beds while dreams of ace finals danced round in their heads. The delis and brick house had shut down their taps and we'd all settled in for our well-deserved naps. Not a soul at the library. Our Zoom screens were dark. Chief Cheesebro's red party patrol golf cart was parked. When out in the garden, sunken that is, there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bunk, ouch, to see what was the matter. The students were cheering their exuberance loud. Whatever was happening, it drew quite a crowd. No more than 50 people though, and socially distanced. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. With the moon shining bright on our campus that night, the vista was magic. I paused for the sight. Bright outdoor lights beckoned from terrace and dell. A new cafe ambiance. Outdoor life's been swell. From yoga at Matoka to hammocks and tents. From hiking to lawn games, our gatherings less dense. I turned toward the cheering. Oh, say, could it be? James Charles and DuPont, a student like me? Then what to my wondering eyes should appear but a sanitized sleigh with eight COVID compliant reindeer. They'd all tested negative, those reindeer, so smart. A mask on each face, they flew six feet apart. With a fun furry driver sporting wings and a mane, hey tribe, it's our griffin flying over the terrain. More rapid than streakers, his coursers they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now seniors, now juniors, now grad schools entire, on sophomores, on freshmen, alumni, and choir. To the tip top of blow, to the top of brick walls, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. He circled the campus and spied Richmond Hall. Quarantine? Isolation? It's been quite a fall. Ah, uh, life in pandemic is anything but rote. It's different for all, in the burg or remote. With classes online, some synchronous, some A, and new pass-fail options, flexibility, hooray. We've all had to pivot and greet the new normal. We mask up to do things, whether casual or formal. On up to the dorm roofs, his coursers they flew, after stopping at Wawa for a hoagie or two. They flew by Hunt Hall, PBK's shell, and then the team circled round over Lemon toward Wren. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof in clear violation of college regulations. 
As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed not in red, but wore green and gold. Santa swaggers with tribe pride around the North Pole. His eyes, how they twinkled. With mischief, it seems. Santa dances on TikTok, and he reads swampy memes. He tried to zoom once, all decked out in his suit. He looked great on screen. But Santa, unmute. A bundle of gifts he flung down from his sleigh, so he looked like a tourist on the outlet's sale day. He unloaded gifts he was sure that would please, some bread ends and house and fries loaded with cheese. He smiled for our students, a better world they promote. They engage the day's issues, they speak out, and they vote. They faced COVID-19 with great courage and care. They've stayed healthy together, the best students anywhere. In the national rankings, our universities gleaming, US News, Forbes, and Kiplinger keep those applicants streaming. We hold the top spots where other schools are just reaching public service, study abroad, and undergraduate teaching. St. Nick thought a lot about his gifts for our crew. He pondered, then knew what he needed to do. He made a great banner for the whole world to see, the best university where any could be. Santa spoke not a word, but went door to door, leaving job offers for seniors and grad admits by the score. Then laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a yell. Ho, ho, ho! And away they all flew, like the ducks on Crim Dell. But we heard him exclaim as that sleigh flew away. You did it, William and Mary. You each get an A. Happy holidays. Thank you, Vice President Ambler. The guiding principles of Yule Log are peace, joy, and gratitude. We invited many individuals and campus cultural and faith groups to participate in the Yule Log ceremony tonight. Additionally, members of the extended William and Mary family have decorated beautiful paper doves for this evening, offering a visual representation of the theme's role in their cultures, faiths, and everyday lives. Several student groups will reflect on peace, joy, and gratitude by offering short passages to share with us tonight. This is an opportunity for our community to celebrate one of its greatest strengths, our diversity. In the spirit of gratitude, we want to acknowledge the collective history of William and Mary as it relates to the grounds on which we celebrate tonight. William and Mary acknowledges the indigenous peoples who are the original inhabitants of the lands our campus is on today. The Cherenhaka, Chickahominy, Eastern Chickahominy, Mattapanai, Monacan, Nanzamund, Nottaway, Pamunkey, Patawomek, Upper Mattapanai, and Rappahannock tribes, and pay our respect to their tribal members past and present. We also wish to acknowledge that the buildings on the historic campus, including the Wren Building where we celebrate tonight, were originally built and maintained by the exploited labor of enslaved African Americans owned or hired by the university. Indeed, enslaved men, women, and children provided the necessities that made the daily lives of the faculty, administration, and students possible, including tuition for less wealthy students. We hope that by recognizing our collective history tonight, during this special celebration of our community, we can more deeply fulfill the statement boldly put forth in the college's 1949 student handbook, who comes here belongs here. In this time of pandemic, we are keenly aware of the sacrifices made by our William and Mary essential workers to keep our campus safe and our community open. Words of thanks will never be enough, but please know all students recognize the risks to your health and the health of your families that you've undertaken to ensure we've been supported and protected this past semester. From dining hall staff and facilities management to healthcare workers, campus police, and residence hall staff, you have our sincerest gratitude. Essential workers, we take our debt to your service seriously and we honor you tonight. Tonight, we welcome representatives from InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, Catholic Campus Ministries, William and Mary Hillel, the Hindu, Sikh, and Jain Students Association, and the Black Student Organization. Please listen as they share reflections on peace, joy, and gratitude. 
My name is Alexa Kelly, and I am representing InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. On Christmas, Christians celebrate Jesus' seemingly unremarkable entrance into a broken and chaotic world, a world that in many ways looks a lot like ours in 2020. The God of the universe entered the world as a helpless, vulnerable baby in a world that was hostile to him. This year, Christmas arrives in a similar time, capping off a tumultuous, terrifying, and dare I say, unprecedented 12 months. It is difficult not to feel suffocated by the fear of the pandemic, the longing for justice for the oppressed, and even by the pressure of finals to boot. However, the Christmas story that could so easily wallow in its own apprehension is instead blazing and resplendent with hope and with joy. Jesus' advent as an infant is celebrated by angel and shepherd alike reverberating throughout the earth with eternal significance. I believe the Christmas story exhorts us to not only be mindful of the joys that still exist in our lives, but to actively rejoice in them. Let us always rejoice in the time we get to spend with those we love, whether it be on-campus friends you stay six feet apart from, or family members you've stayed at home with or recently been reunited with. Let us rejoice in our opportunity to engage with our fields and with our studies so that we may go out into the world and change it for the better. Let us settle in the rest that the holiday season provides and feel the weight of this year and lesson on our shoulders. Though it is by no means easy, may we learn to intentionally find joy in the midst of uncertainty. And may joy be the force that shapes how we act and how we love. In this holiday season, in the new year and beyond. Thank you. Hello, my name is Landon Klein. I'm representing the Catholic campus ministry here on campus. Thank you for joining us virtually. There's something special about our ability to uphold this rich tradition amidst all the challenges we have faced this year. Like a tradition, there are other long-standing aspects of our lives. One thing that has remained constant throughout this year is the source of our peace. True peace is never dependent on outside circumstances and cannot be found in the future or past. It is not dependent on our schoolwork, the distance between one another, the appearance of our faces, or when this time of uncertainty will pass. The source of our peace is and will always be grounded in love from our God and our neighbor. For every trouble we encountered this year, there was an act of love to complement it. There was a friend who picked us up when we could not do it on our own. There was a cleaning staff member staying late to make sure we remained safe. Most importantly, there was a gift that we are all still here. To even be alive is a work of love. Let us respond to this love with gratitude. Thank God and thank all of you for this constant. Allow me to share a poem by St. Teresa of Avila to remind us of our unshakable source of peace and cause for gratitude. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Thank you and God bless. My name is David Charneys and I'm representing Hillel at William & Mary. Every synagogue keeps a flame lit at all times. This ne'er to meet, or eternal flame, represents God's eternal presence. In the first century BCE, after the victory of the Maccabees against the Seleucid Empire, which had outlawed the practice of Judaism, the Jews returned to their temple and saw that the eternal flame had been put out. They found only enough oil to relight it for one day, but instead the flame lasted for eight, which is the origin of the Hanukkah menorah. When Hanukkah is incorporated into the holiday season, the focus is often on light and hope. Tonight's Yule Log celebration is about peace, gratitude, and joy. However, Hanukkah is about the suppression of a nation and the strength of a small group of rebels fighting back. This holiday is a festival of lights in that it celebrates how much effort it takes to keep a flame going. This holiday calls attention to the seemingly insurmountable odds that test the character of a nation. In these unprecedented times, we must remain united in striving toward a brighter future. In our movement towards peace, let us be grateful for the community we have and strive to find joy in all facets of our lives. Hi, my name is Bibba Padrish and I'm representing HSJA. 
The Hindu Sikh and Jain faiths involve belief in a force that is bigger than any individual, yet lives in all of us and binds the whole universe together. This implores us to treat others with love and kindness, since ultimately we are all the same. Thus, on behalf of the Hindu Sikh and Jain Students Association, we hope our Christian siblings have a very Merry Christmas filled with love and kindness. Happy Yule Log, everyone. Hello, we're Black Student Organization. I'm Lonnie, I'm one of the co-presidents. I'm Asia, the other co-president. As we end the year 2020, we bring to a close one of the most challenging, trying years of our lifetime. This year has been one of growth, one of resilience, one of learning through our struggles. Our struggles with COVID, with racism, both systemic and otherwise, with politics, with Zoom, with life in general. This year has been one for the books. But from this, we have begun to understand the world that surrounds us and recognize the different forms of oppression still working against people today and the work that we still have to do. We all have had difficult times, but take a look around. I'm sure we all can agree that we've been able to surround ourselves with support from people that give us peace and joy. Around me, I see the people who are like family, the people who are with us when we need it most, people whom we will cherish for the rest of our lives. As this holiday season is upon us, we must make sure to show our gratitude to our communities for supporting us the way they do and look to share the grace with others who may be less fortunate. Take the time to remember those we've lost both to COVID and to the ongoing battle with police brutality. Let us acknowledge our place in a community that represents the diverse faces of the world and give back to people in the same way that people have given to us. Let us practice the principles of Kwanzaa, a seven day celebration of African culture. Unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. So tonight, enjoy some sweet potato pie and spend time with family and friends. Happy holidays. We hope that these reflections on peace, joy, and gratitude will inspire all of you as part of our campus community to embrace and carry on the spirit of Yule Log long after the last piece of holly has been thrown into the fire. One tribe, one family. Thank you to all our student speakers. We are excited now to introduce a special guest whose tradition is to share her love of books with us each year. Our president, Catherine Rowe, selected this year's book after taking story recommendations from students, and she chooses a new one to read aloud each Yule Log. We are so excited to continue the tradition of coming together as one William and Mary community year after year to share a winter themed story. Without further ado, President Rowe. Good evening, William and Mary. In keeping with our Yule Log tradition, I have a story to share selected by the president's aides. It's a favorite of my family as well and a Caldecott winner, Owl Moon by Jane Yolen, illustrated by John Schoner. This is a beautiful story about hope even in the coldest and darkest of nights. And so it's fitting for 2020. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind, the trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out trains and dogs for a long, long time. And when their voices faded away, it was as quiet as a dream. We walked on towards the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow, and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up. 
when my short, round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, woo, 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 woo. The sound of a great horned owl, woo, 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 woo. Again he called out and then again, after each call, he was silent, and for a moment we both listened. But there was no answer. Pa shrugged and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl, and sometimes there isn't. We walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palm down on my back, and my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I'd ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hid behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf over my mouth and listened hard. Then Pa called. I listened and looked so hard my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Pa almost smiled, then he called back. Woo, 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 woo. Just as if he and the owl were talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf, off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently. With heat in our mouths, the heat of all those words we had not spoken, the shadow hooted again. <coughs> pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, Three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at each other. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without a sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk, I could even laugh out loud. But I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm, or anything but hope. That's what Pa says, the kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. Happy winter break, William and Mary. Stay well. <laughs>
ceremony of the Yule Log is believed to have originated with German tribes in Northern Europe as part of their winter festival. In medieval times, a log, which was sometimes a whole trunk of a tree, was selected on candlemas and carefully stored to dry out for the summer. On Christmas Eve, it was dragged into the house and kindled with unburned parts of the last year's log, which had been saved for that purpose. The Scots and the English later adopted the custom, adding it to their Christmas celebration, and the tradition arrived in America with the first colonists. According to legend, it was considered good luck for the log to burn throughout the 12 days of Christmas. Since it was the custom of some households to declare a holiday for servants while the Yule log burned, every effort was made to assure its longevity. Folktales related that the servants would soak the log in water so it would burn slowly and last throughout the 12 days. When Dr. Grace Warren Landrum, Dean of Women, first introduced the Yule log ceremony at William & Mary in 1930, the affair was elaborate and required a huge cast. The president of the college would dress in colonial costume as Lord of the Manor, and his assistant dressed as Lord of Misrule. A young child, usually from a faculty family, poured wine over the log and threw the first piece of holly into the fire. Announced by a regal trumpet fanfare, costumed log carriers were joined by hog carriers, who brought a boar's head into the Great Hall with the log. The ceremony was discontinued with the outbreak of World War II, and was revived afterwards with a less elaborate format. Each part of the ceremony has an allegorical meaning based on ancient superstitions. Thus, the sprig of green, symbolizing the woes of last year, is cast on the fire to banish those woes forever, to protect the house from ghosties and ghasties and things that go bump in the night. Wine is poured into the fire during the traditional blessing of the log. The ashes of the log are used throughout the year to continue to ward off evil. William and Mary alumni and young patriots celebrated this season with merriment. For students today, the Yule Log ceremony is a welcomed break between finals, in most years, and an opportunity to gather in the holiday spirit with friends and appreciate diverse religious customs. We hope you're enjoying this virtual ceremony in the company of friends and family, wherever you may be. Thank you, Kate and Isabel. I'd now like to present to you a group that brings joy, cheer, and song to the college throughout the year. Here to serenade us with their Yuletide medley, I present the Gentlemen of the College. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. Hey, nice. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, on the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five golden rings. Four calling three birds, three French and two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me nine ladies dancing, eight ladies dancing, seven ladies dancing, six ladies dancing, five. five Shout. You better not pout, you better not treat in a pear tree. On the ninth no, day of no. Christmas, on the eighth day of Christmas, on the seventh day of Christmas, my child came to me. Here we come, a wassailing among the leaves so far. Three French and two turtle doves. Here we go, boys and two men. Better I'd be decked with face and partridge in a pear tree. Eleven's a good number. Eleven's a good number. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Five golden rings, four calling birds, three French and two turtle doves, and Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer from a bum bum. Me and my twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve vipers piping five dance. We wish you a merry fa la 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 la.
Ridge Ridge are laying. Look out! Jack Frost nipping at your nose, my nose. I'll be home for Christmas. And a hound dog in a pear tree, fat hens and a duck. Quack! Thank you, gentlemen. In a moment, we will begin the traditional passing of the Yule Log through the socially distanced crowd, aided by our very own crier. The crier will walk in front of the logs, announcing their location and asking those gathered to move aside. Inside the Great Hall, sprigs of holly will be thrown into the fire to symbolize the disappearance of your troubles and the rebirth of a fresh new year. Make way for the logs. Make way for the logs. Make way for the logs. I toss this sprig of holly into the fire on behalf of Laura and Mary families. I throw this sprig of holly on the fire on behalf of the William and Mary alumni. I toss this holly onto the fire on behalf of the William and Mary faculty. I toss this sprig of holly on the fire on behalf of William and Mary staff. I toss this sprig of holly on the fire on behalf of education graduate students. I toss this sprig of holly onto the fire on behalf of marine science graduate students. I toss this sprig of holly onto the fire on behalf of business graduate students. I toss this sprig of holly on the fire on behalf of law students. I toss this sprig of holly in the fire on behalf of the arts and sciences graduate students. I toss this sprig of holly onto the fire on behalf of the freshman class. I toss this sprig of holly onto the fire on behalf of the sophomore class. I toss this sprig of holly onto the fire on behalf of the junior class. I toss this sprig of holly on the fire on behalf of the senior class. Congratulations, seniors, and happy holidays. Go Tribe. Go Tribe. Happy holidays, Tribe. Happy holidays. Go Tribe and happy holidays. Happy holidays.